But a little bit more about the, our department as a whole, because we have some terrific resources in the department. Our faculty come from a lot of different uh, kinds of disciplines. And let me just show you on the next slide uh, a little bit about, about us. We have uh, six faculty that work with us. We have Sandra Guerin, who's an expert on uh, everything from greenhouse gas management to uh, water resources issues. We have Dr. Brett Bennington, who is an expert in paleontology, but is also very interested in the ideas of the Anthropocene. We have Antonio Marcellus, who does a lot of work on uh, natural hazards, as well as on remote sensing. Then we have uh, Dr. Farmer, who does a number of different types of, of projects on coastal erosion, hurricanes, a lot of modern geologic coastal geology and in marine science, very interesting stuff. And then we have Dr. David O'Connor, who's actually the former head of, of the UN's efforts on sustainable development, who's with us as well, who teaches courses on sustainable development and also works with a number of our graduate students. So that's our core faculty. But the good news about our department is that we also work with dozens of other faculty to deliver our our degree programs in departments all over the university. So you can work with, with faculty in, in, in departments like anthropology, sociology, global studies and geography, biology, chemistry, uh, almost the school of business, uh, the school of engineering, the law school. So a number of different kinds of experts with, uh, are available to you to work with. Uh, but some of you might be wondering, what exactly is sustainable sustainability studies? Well, su sustainability was defined in the 1980s very formally by the United Nations as sustainable development that meets the needs of the present without limiting opportunities for future generations. That's a very formal definition and it's, it's an okay definition. I always like to think of it as, as that we're trying to make the world a better place for future generations. And it's, it's about finding the long-term survivability of our planet. Uh, we want to, our human culture to move into the future with minimum impact on our planet. Just today, I was talking with students about uh, moving our country forward on renewable energy, for example. The United States has uh, roughly about uh, uh, 13, 14% renewable energy sources in our, in our electrical grid. And I will probably be in 20 to 25 in the next 20 or 30 years. And every year we're moving that number higher and higher. And so that's the kind of stuff that we uh, look at in sustainability, not just with electricity, but with that, a number of different things related to environment, social justice, as well as economic development. But in, in, at Hofstra, we tend to focus our uh, sustainable ideas within the uh, local and a global context. Uh, what I mean by that is that we do a lot of work here in the New York metro region, but we also have national as well as international interests on sustainability. I've done a lot of work in China. I've done work in Latin America and other parts of the world. We have faculty who work in, in Europe and, other, and really all over the world, Latin America. And uh, so there are a lot of opportunities to not just work locally, but to work nationally and internationally. And what we try to do, because we are in the New York metro region, we try to give students a real world experience that'll prepare you for uh, the job market or for graduate school. We have some great opportunities for students to work with both the uh, with uh, for-profit non and nonprofit organizations, whether they're, they're governments or whether they're nonprofit agencies. And our goal is to try to prepare students to help save the planet. You've seen all the figures coming out from different organizations about challenges of global climate change or natural resource use or species uh, survivability. So we have a lot of issues uh, that we're dealing with and our, we find that our students are the kinds of people who appreciate nature, who want to make a difference and who want to gain practical experiences while also developing a meaningful career, something that will have long lasting impact on their lives. 
Now, the good thing about about choosing a uh, a major that feels good at this particular moment or picking a graduate degree that feels good is that there really are a lot of green jobs available. It's one of the fastest growing job sectors. There's currently almost 3 million jobs in that area. It, there's a lot of innovation, a lot of entrepreneurial activities. We do a lot of work with the School of Business. We're, we're actually in the process of developing a joint MBA or and MA that students would have available should you come in the next year. Uh, there's also opportunities to in, with jobs in sustainability management, in governments, in energy and water, food, uh, and community development, a, a wide variety of different kinds of areas. And what we find is that our students really, uh, the sky's the limit of what they can do. Because we're in the New York metro area, we're especially in uh, keen on, on uh, this idea of uh, of green jobs in the area of innovation. Uh, the New York area, especially here on Long Island where Hofstra is located, has a lot of uh, venture capital available for startup businesses. So it's a great place to come if you're interested in starting a new business, for example. We, could, we, we have great connections in that realm. Another thing that, that's very important is that we work very closely with the National Center for Suburban Studies here at Hofstra University. We do a lot of different work at the center on sustainability in the suburbs, whether it's social sustainability, sustainability uh, in many parts of the world, of the, the, world uh, the suburbs are increasingly under pressure for housing and prices, are, costs are going up and it's harder for the middle class uh, uh, or lower income or even higher income people to survive in the suburbs as they did in the past. So issues of that, but over here in, in, in our center, some of the projects we've worked on in the last year or two relate to the suburbs after Hurricane Sandy. If you remember the New York area, Long Island got hit pretty hard by Hurricane Sandy. We also work on water quality issues here locally uh, and street sweeping issues. We've done work on uh, greenhouse gas issues nationally. We're in the process of developing uh, case studies in suburban sustainability from all over the country. We also do a lot of work in geographic information systems and science, uh, and we also work on food and suburban farming issues. Let me just tell you briefly about our undergraduate program, just so you get a flavor for, for where a lot of our students who stay in the program for their master's are coming from. We offer both a BA and a BS option at the undergraduate level. Uh, the BS major is a very tough science-based major that's geared to, to the students interested in STEM science, interested in gaining uh, access to jobs that require a hardcore science uh, background. We require students to have a considerable amount of biology, chemistry, and math for the BS. The BA options are those students that are interested in public policy, planning, community development, business, entrepreneurial activity, et cetera. So that's a little bit of a background in what our undergraduate programs look like. Our master's program is, it brings all of that together at the graduate level where students can focus in on both uh, uh, science or policy issues, but hopefully a blend of that in the, to, to, to earn a degree as, as an MA, in an MA. And it requires 30 uh, credit hours uh, in the degree. That uh, 30 hours, let's, let me just go through how that's broken down. We require nine core courses, uh, th th uh, three specific classes, one in sustainable development, one in sustainability theory and practice, and one that is a general readings class that it gets you reading in deeply re read, deep, reading deeply in a topic that interests you. We also have another core requirement, which is six hours of either internship or thesis. Now we urge anyone who's interested in, in going on for a PhD to do the thesis. However, if you think you're going to have a job where you're going to be doing a lot of writing and you don't plan to go for a PhD, we encourage students to go on with of, of writing the master's thesis. 
But for those of you that are interested more on the business end of things or perhaps on community activism, an internship might be the appropriate option for you. In either way, it doesn't matter to us which way you go. We just wanted to make both options available to students. Now, the, the, the thing that I like the most about our program is the flexibility in, in other hours. You could take 15, hour, 15 graduate hours in any other graduate program uh, that's approved by the graduate director. Now, we've listed most of those. If you go to our website and look at our graduate handbook, those departments are listed. But we urge you to work with your advisor or your graduate committee to uh, to set up your your this, the types of courses that you want to take through your career. So students might be very interested in in some of the science ends of things and take a mix of biology and chemistry courses, where other students might be interested more on the philosophical or social science end of things and take courses in those departments. Students could also take courses in business and earn a dual MBA and, a, and an MA in sustainability. It really is up to you working with me and or your advisor in coming up with the right mix of courses. And there's a list of, of some of the departments that we work with, some of the courses that in departments that are available to you. Uh, but there are other courses that we could talk about too if you were to come here. Let's talk, let's change the topic a little bit and talk about the admissions requirements. The admissions requirements are, are relatively simple. We have three, or excuse me, four basic requirements for you. First of all, you need to have a degree in a related field. Uh, that field can vary considerably. It could be anything in the sciences or social sciences, and even in the humanities, they're, they're, if you have an interest in sustainability. You also have to have a, a minimum 3.0 GPA. Now, we look at that in, as your last 60 hours uh, it, overall, generally. But most of the students that apply, tend, uh, we would look at for expect to have a, a 3.0 in the last 60 hours of, of, of your undergraduate coursework. If you've been out of school for a while, we can, we can modify that a little bit because a lot of times with work experience, people learn so much on the job that we will, if you're coming back after, after a few years after you get your undergraduate degree, we, we often will, will overlook some of the GPA issues. I think we also need uh, three letters of recommendation. Now, I urge you to get those largely from faculty members at your current institution who could speak to things like your writing ability or your coursework. Uh, and then we also need a letter of intent. This is probably the most important thing that we look at to make sure that there's a match. Obviously, we're located uh, at, on Long Island at it in one of the largest metropolitan regions of the world. So it's unlikely we would admit somebody to work with us who might be interested in more rural sustainability issues, such as say, managing grasslands in Iowa. That would probably not be a good match for us. But if you're interested in urban and suburban sustainability or international issues or national scope issues, we're a great fit for you. Uh, for more information on on this, there is a graduate handbook that's online that goes into this in a little bit more detail than I can do it here on the webinar. And the link is on the uh, the web on the slide, or you can also just do a Google search and find search for sustainability masters Hofstra, and you'll find us, or go through our graduate uh, school website. We also have scholarship, some funding available for students in the form of scholarship and research awards. Uh, we are a private university, so that we do offer scholarships as opposed to traditional graduate assistantships. Uh, if you're interested in scholarships, please let us know. We also hire some students on research awards that where you actually will work for in the department on one of the many research projects that we have underway. The funding comes typically from the National Center for Suburban Studies. So obviously you probably work on issues that we're concerned about in our area, but often that type of research can lead to a thesis or an internship project. So now let's just take a review of a few 
few things uh, by going through some our, our some important websites for you. First of all, our graduate admissions website is listed there on the slide. You can reach out to find a link there and reach out to anybody in graduate admissions. They'd be happy to answer any of the university-wide questions related to the application, or if you wanted to schedule a visit to come visit the graduate admissions site to, to see the campus, they would be glad to help you with that as well. Our department website is also listed where, the, as I said, we're the Department of Geology, Environment, and Sustainability. You could see a lot of information there. You can also look, find us on Facebook and see what we are up to and what the students are up to. We have a very dynamic department. The students are always busy. We've got a group going in the field, for example, this Friday to do some coring in one of the bays in Long Island Sound. Uh, just off, It's actually in Queens to look at the, the health of some of the, the, the subsurface microbes and the sediments, uh, look at the sediment development offshore of Queens. Uh, and then of course, there's a link for information about the, sustain, the sustainability master's degree itself. So a lot of information there, including a link to the graduate handbook that lists all of the faculty that, are, that participate in, in the master's degree, over two dozen of them as well as some of the rules and regulations about the program and the courses. Now, if you have any additional questions, you can reach out to me at this, with my phone number is there, there's also my email. And there's also the Graduate Office of Graduate Admissions with their number and their email. So with that, I will open up the webinar to any questions that might be out there. Okay, a few came in. Uh, when did the program begin at Hofstra University? Well, the, the program started just in uh, the, the fall of 2015. We actually have our first class that started at that time. Uh, the, the, just so everybody knows who's not from Hofstra, we pride ourselves in small classes. The largest undergraduate class, classroom size, is 37 students. So we have very close faculty student uh, relationships. And at the graduate level this fall, we admitted six master's students. We anticipate to enroll maybe six to 10 uh, this coming fall. So these are very small cohorts of students that come in at a time. Uh, another question was what types of jobs do graduates of this program uh, get? What, what kinds of, of areas do they enter in, in employment? Well, none of our master's students have graduated yet, so we're working on that. Some of them want to go on for a PhD, which is very common for students in the master's, but I could tell you of the students that, that I've worked with in the past at another university, the master's students do very well. They end up working in everything from environmental planning to energy to uh, some have opened up businesses. I've had students that get into uh, sustainable food production. I've got others that do sustainability consulting. At our undergraduate level, all of our students have gotten jobs at the undergraduate level or are in, uh, in graduate programs, the, the ones who have graduated from our program. And again, the, the sustainability is such a broad field that it really is up to the student to define uh, their interests at both the undergraduate and graduate level. And we will work with you to try to find you access to the best jobs that are out there. Okay, another question is, is there an application deadline? There is, we urge students to apply uh, by the end of February for fall admission. However, we will still look at applications all the way through till the summer. So if you Change your if you you're you're one of those students who thinks thinks in the middle of early summer, boy, I wonder if I should go to graduate school. And you were watching this webinar now. Still apply there. We we might have room for you, but we do urge all students to try to get their applications in early for the spring enrollment or, or for the uh, fall enrollment and about this time of year or about October or early November for the spring admission. But again, we will look at every, any application that comes in and see how, how you would fit coming into this system. Uh, what types of internship opportunities are available is another question that came in. We have great connections in the New York metro region 
with everything from some of the best international nonprofits to the United Nations to uh, for-profit organizations, consulting firms, uh, to for-profit uh, sustainability companies that do uh, that either make things or consult on things. And we also work with a lot of uh, non of uh, uh, social governments and uh, government related organizations such as uh, the, the state of New York or uh, the uh, or, or county or local governments that are often looking for for experts to use in sustainability to help them with projects. So honestly, the, the best we have great access here for internship opportunities for students. And because we have such a small number of students that we work with, uh, we can take a look at every student individually and try to match them up with the best internship we can find for them. I think that's it with our questions online. So I believe that this ends the, the webinar. It was great talking to everyone today. And again, please feel follow, free to follow up with me. I'm Dr. Robert Brinkman, Director of Sustainability Studies at Hofstra University, and we hope to see you on campus soon.